The acute supply shortages we've been seeing since the beginning of the health crisis are actually not something new in the history of the United States. In fact, throughout the past century, America has faced several crises, external and internal conflicts and economic downturns. Times of shortages are far more common than people can remember, and in the old days, hoarding and panic buying already existed. People used to stock up on everyday essentials ranging from flour to toilet paper, not very different from what happens today. However, except for two periods of extreme drought, food shortages have often been second-order crises caused by political and economic tensions, not by the lack of food per se. Yet there were other moments when multiple determinants resulted in severe shortages too, like during the Great Depression of the 1930s. If there's something we could learn from the supply chain disruptions induced by the effects of the health crisis, is that food shortages do not mean food doesn't exist. It means that food isn't available on grocery shelves where consumers can easily find it. In 2020, during the peak of the sanitary outbreak, the threat of lockdowns prompted millions of people to rush into the stores and leave shelves empty. What most people didn't know at the time was that there were tons and tons of food waiting to be delivered, but due to transportation problems and government restrictions, they never were. Farmers and food processors were forced to dump their milk, their meat, their fresh produce because they were not allowed to sell them directly to consumers due to contractual obligations. Millions of dollars worth of food has been destroyed, while grocery chains allegedly struggled to keep up with the overwhelming demand. It all could have been avoided if there was better supply chain management. In February 2021, after ravaging ice storms hit the state of Texas, it became clear that most supply chain issues were never solved. Once again, people engaged in a massive panic-buying frenzy to stock up on food staples and even gasoline to get through the crisis. In a couple of days, most grocery stores were either closed or empty, just as we had seen in April of the previous year. And one more time, the problem wasn't the lack of fuel or food, but transportation challenges admit the coldest winters ever experienced. Shortages were sparked by people's hoarding behavior, not by the absence of supply. As Oscar Prepper's Rich M. highlighted in an excellent article about the U.S. supply chain strains, hoarding isn't prepping. Preppers build their stockpile over months or even years, and their habits do not actively affect supplies in the stores. Hoarders and panicked buyers, on the other hand, make excessive last-minute purchases without considering the needs of others. Unfortunately, as Rich explained, most of them do not save or properly store what they've bought for the next potential crisis. Instead, they repeat the same problematic buying patterns all over again. Now, another lesson we can take from those panic-fueled shortages is that they distress entire food chains at record speed, and during that process, they contribute to steep price hikes. After so many waves of panic buying and widespread shortages, people have started to become used to seeing rising prices all across the economy and companies conveniently take advantage of those situations to justify permanent price increases. So whenever an emergency erupts and people start fearing its consequences and its impacts on grocery shelves, major food chains hold on to their stockpiles to keep prices up for as long as possible, further aggravating supply and demand imbalances. That is to say, over the next crisis, we will certainly watch the cost of everything reaching new historical highs. But if there's one thing most Americans don't know or are failing to consider, is that another major economic collapse is looming. 
even if it isn't the next crisis to be triggered, given that disasters and emergencies can blow up unexpectedly overnight. As we discussed in many of our previous videos, the government's monetary response to the health crisis has pushed our national debt up to almost $30 trillion. And although most parts of the population remain unbothered or unaware of that, this is something we should all be paying close attention to. In the early 2000s, when our national debt surpassed $10 trillion, economists were warning that any more than that would be unsustainable. Now we have tripled that amount. And by the end of the year, at least two more spending plans are going to be passed on Congress, but only a few groups realize the dangers of crossing that line. We are told that because the United States is such a powerful economy, we're allowed to take up on more and more and more debt, and at the end of the day, everything will be just fine, which is far from the truth. At this point, our national debt has gone way over our gross national product, but hardly anyone cared or noticed it. We have been operating under a push-it-under-the-limit motto, as if we haven't exceeded that limit already. This is the kind of debt trap that drove many of the world's leading economies to the ground. And it's just not intelligent to sit and wait to see what happens. Recently, a number of experts have been stressing that our financial system is broken. They say that regardless of what reckless investors want to believe, we're on the verge of a financial disaster. If our markets crash and the government steps in with another trillion dollar rescue plan, we'll see the entire economy going down the same financial cliff that Argentina and Greece did in recent years. In short, the only thing preventing another calamitous economic depression right now is the fact that the American dollar is the world's reserve currency. As Rich outlined in his article, countries literally have to have US dollars in order to do international trade because other than in a few cases where countries have signed agreements between themselves to use their own currency for trade, like for example the trade between Russia and China, all international trade is paid for in US dollars. This has allowed our country to export some of our national debt, encapsulated in American dollars and treasury bonds. Other countries unwittingly support our massive debt because they pretty much have to. Should the world get together and decide not to, we'd be in trouble. In the face of an overly expanded money supply, a huge national debt, runaway inflation, and the decay of our currency's purchasing power, major economies have started to walk away from dollar transactions and dump their treasury bonds, which means that in a snap of the fingers, we could find ourselves in the middle of a financial collapse that no one saw coming, except those who have been alerting, we're taking the wrong turn but most of them are being left unheard. What will happen to the US then will be similar to what happened in the Argentina collapse of 1999, when nearly 25% of the population was unemployed and inflation levels were going through the roof, making it increasingly harder for workers to afford essential items and to make ends meet. During that downturn, severe food shortages swept across the entire country. But just as today's shortages, that didn't occur due to a lack of supply. Argentinian farmers had plenty of fresh produce that never made it to the stores. At that time, shortages also didn't happen because of transportation problems, but due to pricing. And it's very likely we're going to experience the same. In fact, we already are. But the worst is yet to come. Considering that the food industry runs on a significantly low profit margin, with grocery stores making only a little over 2% in net profit, their business model basically works through selling a high amount of volume. But in times of supply chain disruptions, disasters, emergencies, or when panic-fueled purchases trigger shortages of products, 
Well then, the price grocery chains pay for the products they resell rapidly rise. Needless to say, the same happens during a major financial collapse. As a consequence, that small profit margin actually turns into a loss, since a larger amount of people can't afford to pay such rising prices and grocers can't turn their inventory fast enough to make sure they make a profit on the food they buy. When a situation like this occurs, grocers have essentially two alternatives. Either they hold on to their supply stockpiles and wait until they can sell them at a higher price, or they just raise the prices, period. Both scenarios end up happening anyway, but at varying degrees, also depending on the financial conditions of the store itself and what it needs to do to stay in business. And that's when things start to get really tricky. Some may think that food shortages mean there's no food anywhere. But as the Ask a Prepper writer perfectly puts it, even in the midst of the worst food shortages the world has ever seen, there's always been food. The problem isn't that there is no food, but rather there isn't enough to go around. We can see that throughout history and we can still see it in various parts of the world today. So, when food becomes a scarce commodity and prices start skyrocketing, the vast majority of the population becomes unable to buy food for themselves and their families. Only those with enough money and influence will be able to find and buy what they need at such insanely inflated prices. With the exception of those who prepped or those who can grow their own food. During the Great Depression, people who lived on farms and rural lands generally had enough to eat, while those who lost their jobs in the cities ended up on exceedingly long bread and soup lines just to have something to put in their stomach. This is how millions of Americans were thrown out of their comfortable middle-class lives and fell right into poverty. Those people faced starvation and we are today about to see millions upon millions just like them face starvation when we move to the next stage of the economic collapse. When the dollar collapses, don't expect the government to bail us out of the crisis that will follow. In that stage, money won't solve any of our problems. If anything, it'll only make things worse. In times like these, governments are forced to take austerity measures so they can try to keep the debt problem they created themselves back under control. Social programs such as stimulus checks, food stamps, fiscal relief for businesses are promptly suspended. It's every man for himself. The whole nation is taken over by disorder and confusion. A broken society and empty stomachs are enough to bring a country down. People will not be panic buying and hoarding. They will be fighting and stealing. We've already seen a very small fraction of that tumult during the Texas storms and the colonial pipeline shut down. Only this time, things won't come back to normal. There will be no normal anymore. There will only be chaos. The big question is, are you ready?